All right. So in the last video, we talked a little bit about the idea of a um, a rate of reaction, which is simply changing a, a number that looks at how much that concentration of a species, whether it's reactant or product, changes over a period of time. And I want to take a quick step back to think about what are some factors that can affect the reaction rate. And before we even get to those factors, I kind of want to talk about what are some requirements that must be met in order for a reaction to happen. There are a few requirements um, that need to be met in order for, like, for example, um, two chemicals to react to form a new one. And um, I'm going to walk through those first and then provide an analogy, which hopes, hopefully makes it stick a little bit better. Um, so in order for a reaction to occur, three things must happen. First, you must have molecules or particles collide. There must be a collision uh, in order for them to, for something to happen. Because um, if there's no collision, then that means there's no interaction between like two species. And if there's no interaction between two species, then we're not going to get a reaction to occur. The next, excuse me, the next thing that needs to happen is that that collision needs to have enough energy in order to break chemical bonds. So for example, if we think of a reaction that is like A and B plus C, and I've just arbitrarily said A's and B's, goes to A plus B and C, and B and C are now chemically bonded, while in the first one, A and B were chemically bonded. Um, in order for this reaction to occur, C has to crash into that molecule, which is AB. Um, and it also must have enough energy in order to actually break this bond um, in order to um, interact. Um, and then the other thing is that it needs to happen at a proper alignment. So for example, if C comes around and he hits like right here around the A side, um, he's not going to be able to face blocking. So you must have a collision. That collision must have sufficient energy and um, you need proper alignment. Um, so typically the analogy, which seems to stick really well in kids' minds for some reason, um, is uh, thinking about the requirements for a chemical reaction to occur, and then also thinking about that with regards to like trying to um, knock somebody, um, whether we're think talking about like professional boxing or MMA, or just you're really pissed at somebody and you want to punch them out. Um, in order to knock somebody out, you must have a collision. You must punch them. Um, now, just the fact of that there's contact between two people doesn't mean that you have sufficient energy in order to knock them out. A nice little light tap on the shoulder is not going to knock them out. You really got to give it it all and you got you to gotta hit them hard. You need sufficient energy behind that punch. And then the orientation matters. So, for example, if you punch somebody really, really hard, uh, but it's somewhere down like uh, on their like thigh, yes, it's going to hurt, but it's probably not going to knock them out. Where if that same punch or that same energy hits them right in the face, um, that's much more likely to uh, knock around their their uh, brain and their skull and leave them unconscious. So if you're having a hard time remembering that kind of idea that you must get a collision, that collision needs sufficient energy, and that orientation uh, matters, um, an analogy that helps a lot of students is just thinking about like punching me in the face, trying to knock me out. So. If that's if that what helps you, then that's what helps you, and I don't I won't complain. Um, so now that we kind of talked about what's required for a reaction to occur, let's think about how a variety of these factors changes um, that rate, and does it increase or decrease um, or have no effect at all? So the very first one we're going to talk about is surface area. Um, so surface area is going to describe um, a, it's going to be a measure of how much uh, of that surface is available. So for example, if we think of like um, uh, a huge basketball versus a bunch of little ping pong balls, um, even if there's the exact same amount of material, uh, ping pong balls have a lot more surface compared to basketball. Because with the basketball, you have a lot more stuff that's inside. Um, so if we're thinking about a reaction, um, as you increase the amount of surface area, so as you increase the amount of surface area, uh, you are allowing uh, more opportunities 
opportunities for collisions. And if you have more opportunities for collisions, then we're going to have a higher success of a reaction occurring. Or a... So as you increase the surface area, you're going to increase the rate because um, you're having more you have more locations where you can actually get a chemical reaction to occur. Um, I think that makes you have like one really, really big versus a bunch of like really, really, really small um, spots. Um, right here, all of the stuff that's inside here, which is all still that chemical, that stuff is there's no way that that's actually going to be collided with because all it's going to do is just collide with its outside. So there's less active area where you can actually get a reaction to occur. So a smaller surface area is going to mean that you're going to have more opportunities for collisions and you're going to have a higher success rate for a reaction occurring. So now uh, the next one, we're going to think about concentration. So as you change the concentration of your reactants, how will the rate change? And it's going to increase. But I think this one kind of makes sense, right? So I'll, I'll think of just two boxes. And uh, if I'm going to, I'll use green molecules here. So on, on this first one, I have a very, very concentrated solution. And on the uh, rightmost one, I have a much more dilute solution. Um, if we think about getting a reaction to occur, on the leftmost, you're much more likely to get a reaction to occur because there's molecules all over the place. So you're going to get more collisions because there's just more stuff there. So as you increase the concentration, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to increase the amount of your reactants per a given volume. That's just the definition of uh, uh, concentration, remember. And if you're going to increase the amount of reactants, uh, you're going to have a higher, a higher number. Put that backwards. Right, an H. You're going to have a higher number of collisions. And if you have more collisions, um, that's going to be more likely for a reaction to occur. Now, if we then think about temperature, so as you increase the temperature, how will the rate change? And now if you think like all the way back to like the ideal gas law and you think about the effective temperature, as you increase the temperature, you're adding energy to the system. So you're going to increase the kinetic energy. So as I increase my temperature, I'm going to increase my kinetic energy. And if you increase the kinetic energy, this means that your, your molecules, your particles are going to be moving faster. And if they're going to be moving faster, those are going to have harder or stronger collisions. So if you increase the temperature, everything's moving faster. So that collision is now going to have more energy. So it's more likely in order for a chemical reaction to occur. Because you remember that second kind of requirement for a reaction to occur, molecules must collide and that collision must have sufficient force. So if you increase the temperature, you're now going to have those, uh, those collisions being uh, uh, harder. So that's going to increase the likelihood of a reaction occurring. And the last one is use of a catalyst. So the idea of what a catalyst does, um, and we're going to talk about this a lot, uh, this chapter, especially like towards the end, um, what a catalyst does is it holds the molecule typically in a certain orientation. And what it does is it allows uh, a, or creates a site um, or a location, so that's what I mean by site, for a reaction. So if, and then the other thing it does is it lowers uh, the activation energy, which is a term You've, you've probably heard of, um, but you haven't really have a good definition. Um, we're going to talk about the idea of activation energy a lot. I just kind of want to give this here because it fits in nicely. Um, if you lower the activation energy, the threshold for the, uh, the collision, how strong that must be in order to break bonds, gets lower. So the catalyst helps with the orientation, and it can also lower the activation energy, which means it can lower the amount of energy needed to, to break bonds. Um, and so, yeah, we haven't really talked about the idea of catalyst. We're going to come back to that a lot. Um, so we see here, we kind of talked about a few, uh, key factors 
um, I don't want to cross that out, surface area, concentration, temperature, and the use of a catalyst. All three of those, as you increase them, you're going to make the reaction go faster. And we've kind of talked about why through here. Um, and the other thing that we kind of mentioned here is that uh, in order for a reaction to occur, you must have a collision, it must have sufficient energy, and it must have the right orientation to occur. So that just kind of gives a, a quick break to kind of talk about um, what are some kind of requirements for a kind of reaction to occur and how does some external factors um, affect the rate. Um, so with that, we're going to kind of end the video here. And then when we come back, um, we're going to start talking about um, how the stoichiometry uh, affects the rate of the reaction.